Assalamu alaikum guys, my name is Rakan Kayali and welcome to Practical Islamic Finance. In this video, we're going to talk about short selling, what it is and whether it's halal or haram. If you're wondering why I'm this dressed up, well, this is how I typically dress up when I'm walking around in my house. So without further ado, let's get started. Short selling is a way to profit off of your expectations that the price of a particular stock is going to go down in the near future. So shorting a stock is basically the opposite of having a long position in a stock. Having a long position in a stock means that you're buying it at a price and you're hoping that you can sell it at a higher price later. Having a short position in the stock means that you're hoping for the opposite. Basically, you're hoping to sell at a high price and then buy at a lower price later. To explain this more, let's consider the following example. Let's say I'm analyzing XYZ stock and currently XYZ stock is trading at $100 per share. Now, upon my analysis, I conclude that the actual price of XYZ stock, the fair price of XYZ stock should be $50 a share. So it's overvalued. Now, right now we're at time equals zero. And I think that it's probably going to be $50 a share at time equals one. So what I do is I go to a broker and I say, hey, let me borrow one share of XYZ stock, one share just to make things easy. Let me borrow one share of XYZ stock. So the broker says, okay, here's your one share of XYZ stock that you want to borrow from me. I'm going to charge you a fee because I'm letting you borrow this share from me. And now you owe me one share of XYZ stock. So what I do is I take my one share of XYZ stock that I borrowed from the broker and I sell it at market price, which currently at time equals zero is $100. And now I'm hoping that the price of a share of XYZ stock falls because I owe the broker one share of XYZ. So I'm hoping it falls so I can buy it again at less than what I sold it for, at less than the $100 that I sold it for, and I keep the difference as a profit for me. So let's say at time equals one, the price of one share of XYZ stock was $50, exactly as I predicted. So I buy the one share of XYZ, I return it to the broker, and I keep the $100 dollars that are the proceeds from my sale of XYZ stock at time equals zero minus the $50 that I used to repurchase the share of XYZ stock at time equals one. I keep the difference of $50 for me as profit. Now in the case that the price of XYZ stock actually rose at time equals one and let's say it reached $150 and I have to cover my short position then I have to buy XYZ stock for the $150 in order to return it to the broker, in which case I've lost $50 in this transaction. I made $100 when I sold it, but then I had to buy it again for $150, so I lost $50. Now there are three important points that I wanna make sure that you know about taking a short position in a stock. The first is the risk versus return. The maximum return that you can get from shorting a stock is the price that you sold that stock for. So going back to our example of XYZ stock, the maximum return that we could possibly get from shorting this stock would be $100 per share. And we would achieve that return if the price of the stock went to zero. So essentially the company went bankrupt. On the other hand, the maximum loss that you can incur from a short position is technically infinite because there is no ceiling to the price of a particular stock. So going back to XYZ, the price may have been 100 when you sold the shares, but there's no telling where they can go up to by the time you have to cover your short position. So it's important to understand that your risk, your losses are really unlimited when you're shorting a stock. So it's extremely dangerous to do this. The second important point to mention regarding shorting a stock is that 
a short seller needs to maintain a margin requirement. So basically when the person, the short seller goes to the broker and borrows shares from that broker, typically that broker is going to require that that person keeps at least 50% of the value of the stocks that they borrowed as collateral basically in a margin account. And then if the price of a stock goes up, so in this case, if it goes from 100 to 150, for example, then they're going to get a margin call. And basically when an investor or a short seller gets a margin call, they have one of two options. They can either add more cash to their margin account or they have to cover their short position. So they can either add more cash. So if they had $50 in their margin account, they'll probably need to increase it to around $75 or they have to actually take the loss and buy the shares for $150 and uh, return the share to the broker. Now this dynamic of margin accounts brings me to my third point, which is the impact that short selling has on stocks. This impact is that it typically will cause the price of a stock to overshoot when it's going up and to overshoot when it's going down as well. And the reason why this happens is because when a stock's price is going up, if that stock is heavily shorted, all of a sudden all of these shorts that shorted this stock have to cover their position so they have to buy the stock so that creates more demand for the stock as its price is going up, which causes its price to go up even more. And then on the way down, when shorters will pile on to a particular stock and increase their short positions, they will borrow more stocks and then try and sell them, basically artificially increasing the supply of those stocks on the market, which will bring the price of an individual share down even further. So basically shorting a particular stock may cause that stock to overshoot on its way up and to overshoot on its way down as well. Now let's talk about whether shorting a stock is halal or haram. All right, so most people agree that shorting a stock is haram and they cite typically three different arguments. The first argument is that selling something you've borrowed as is the case with a short seller who borrows a stock from the broker and then sells that thing that they borrowed without having ownership of that thing. This is haram. You can't sell something that you borrowed. Now, people who advocate for this argument will cite the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's hadith, which says, do not sell that which you do not possess. La taba' ma laysa indak. And if you look at the scholarship on this topic, there has been some back and forth regarding what this hadith particularly pertains to and whether it applies to stocks or not and what is meant by possess does it mean ownership or does it mean just having it so i'm not going to focus on this argument the second argument relates to riba and basically this argument is that when the broker is letting the short seller borrow a stock they are charging that person a fee and the argument is that this fee is actually riba and again, there's some controversy about this as well, whether this fee is riba or not. So I'm not going to focus on this argument either. I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with either of these arguments, but I'm not going to focus on them. And the reason why I'm not going to focus on them is because some people have attempted to create halal short selling by addressing these two points. And I want to emphasize the point that you don't really need these two arguments to reach the conclusion that I'm about to reach. The third argument related to the halalness or haramness of shorting a stock is basically that the act of shorting a stock is no different than Maser. And I think this is the strongest argument. We've mentioned on this channel before that Maser is basically when you create risk without any prospects of creating any value that corresponds with the risk that you're creating. So a quick example, if you open a business, you're creating risks that didn't exist before, but there are prospects of creating value that can justify the risk that you're creating through starting a business. And that value is represented by the goods and services that you 
are attempting to offer through the business that you started. On the other hand, if you go to a casino and you bet on the color red at the roulette wheel, then you're creating risk, you're putting your money at risk in hopes of material gain, and there's no prospects for creating any value from this risk that you created. Now, when we look at short selling, what we have is the creation of risk with no prospects of creating any value. In fact, as I mentioned, it often creates negative value through the overshooting on the way up and overshooting on the way down of prices for the different stocks that are shorted. Now to explain this point further, if we look at taking a long position, which is basically the standard, I buy a stock and I hope that it goes up in price. What is happening is that risk is being transferred from the seller of the stock to the buyer of the stock. There's no creation of risk. So Adam, he owned one share of XYZ. He sold that one share to Fatima, right? So now Fatima bears the risk of ownership of that one share of XYZ and Adam receives money. So the amount of risk that existed before the sale equals the amount of risk that exists after the sale. It just transferred from Adam to Fatima. Now let's look at what happens with a short sale. So let's say Adam is a broker and let's say he owns the one share of XYZ and Bob is a short seller. And so he borrows one share of XYZ from Adam. And then let's say Bob sells his one share of XYZ to Karim in exchange for cash. Now, who is bearing the price risk of that single share of XYZ? In fact, Adam bears that risk because he's still the owner. Karim also bears that risk because he too is an owner of that same share of XYZ. And the reason why this is possible is because Bob sold something that he borrowed. And oh, by the way, Bob's risk technically is infinity. It's unlimited. So Bob, by short selling the share of XYZ, created a lot of risk that didn't exist previously in the market. And for what? What is the value of shorting a stock for the health of a market? I see very little. Even if someone is going to argue that, yes, there is some value in shorting a stock. In my mind, that value nowhere near justifies the risk that is being created with short selling, this is clearly gambling. There are no prospects for creating any value that can justify the risk that is being created, even if you're able to get over the first argument, which is that selling something that you borrowed is haram. Even if you're able to get over the second argument, which is that the fee that the broker is charging is haram, you certainly cannot get over the third argument, which is that this is clearly Macer. It's gambling. You're making a bet. You're not producing any value. And frankly, I think that financial markets would function much better without short selling. And in fact, in September of 2008, the SEC here in the United States actually banned short selling on a thousand different financial institutions because at the time it was concerned about the negative impact that short sellers could have on these financial institutions. So my advice is to absolutely stay away from short selling. I see it as creating unnecessary risk that has no prospects for creating any value in return. And frankly, I would stay away from any claims of Islamic short selling accounts. I've seen no merit to any of them. And here, I think it's important to say that the role of Islamic finance is not to just copy everything that regular finance has and give it Arabic names. The role of Islamic finance is to create value where it's needed and to take what's valuable from traditional finance and to leave what's not valuable. So we shouldn't be aiming to always replicate everything that we find in traditional finance. That makes no sense to me. That's not the goal of Islamic finance. The goal is to take the things that are useful, 
leave the things that are not useful. And then where there is a need that is unfilled, innovate and try and find products that abide by Islamic principles and fill this particular need that hasn't been filled. So that's my take on short selling. I hope you found it beneficial. If you did, leave a like. It really helps. Subscribe for more content. If you need halal funding and you live in the United States, go to fundmebff.com. Also, if you're looking for a halal investment and you earn more than $200,000 annually, go to fundmebff.com and apply to become an investor. Until next time, take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.